Ramble. Thank you to Flex, the CDC, Stitch Fix, and Sweet Scoop for sponsoring this episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. I'm one of your hosts, Becky, and I'm joined with Maggie. Hello. We've got our podcast picks at Rainy and our podcast Pixie Miles. And that's it, guys. Okay. That's all we got. You- Rachel is out of town. Ariel's with Bebe. I know. It's just us two. So it's just going to be me and Becky making hard <laughs> eye contact the entire episode. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also sitting on the opposite side from where I normally sit. And there's a monitor that I can see out of the side of my view. And I'm like, hello, monitor. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello there. Oh, mm-hmm. Maggie, how was your weekend? What did you do this weekend? Zach probably already is going to talk about this on one of the podcasts, but we threw a big old party here at uh, Try Guy's office uh, for his birthday party, which was very, very fun. And then on Sunday, we what, had... What'd you have at the party? Tell us more. Oh, yeah. So What it was, was there? Was there food? Was there booze? Was there music? Yeah, yeah. So it was Zach's backwards bar mitzvah, and it was <clears throat> chaos because... And what does that mean, back, backwards bar mitzvah? For those non-Jewish people yeah. listening. So, um, so bar mitzvahs, which I recently found out, takes place at the age of 13. And Zach always wanted to have one for his 30th birthday. But because of 2020 and the madness that it is, um, we didn't have anything for his 30th birthday. I actually got engaged on his 30th. I think it's been like a year since I've been engaged. Anyway, um, so... He planned this party, he started planning for it on a Monday. The party took place on a Saturday and I was so stressed out for him. Uh, But he pulled it together and it was really nice. He had a lot of help from Sweet Keith uh, and Alexandrian and uh, Will. Um, So it was great. Uh, What was at the party? We had karaoke, we had crazy lights. There was a fog machine that set off the fire alarm. Uh, Okay, wait, you gotta... I know. Dive into that. So I what know. happened with the fire alarm? How did it get set off? Okay, so. Did the fire department come? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It was something else. So uh, <coughs> Keith brought his fog machine from home, from mm-hmm. your guys' house, um, and gave the remote, remote control to Kelsey, our sweet friend Kelsey. And Kelsey was just chatting with everybody <laughs> around the party, having a great ass, great time, holding down the button and just chaos. So the room, all the doors and windows were closed just because it was really hot outside. Um, and the room filled with fog. And all of a sudden, the fire alarm started going off. Uh, we couldn't really hear it because the music was so loud. <gasps> Kelsey's boyfriend, Cap Slap, Jared, was DJing um, and was able to sync up the music or like the bass or when the bass was hitting to the fire alarm. Um, We got Will on top of a ladder to try and mute it, but it's not like a home uh, fire alarm where you can just tell it to shut up. Um, Keith was panicked. We went outside and Keith is just on the phone. Uh, This is, I'm sure they'll tell this story, but he was like, hello, my name is Keith Abersberger. This is the address that I'm at. Like there is no emergency, but we could not figure out how Mm -hmm. to silence the fire alarm. And it was only, I want to say like 930 or 10 at this point. And we almost had to shut it all down. (gasps) I didn't know fog could set off a fire alarm. I thought fog was mostly water. That's what I thought. I was (sighs) like, I, I guess it reads it as whatever is thick in the air. I wonder Mm. if you fart in front of a a fire uh, alarm, it could also set it off. It was like musty enough. You think you think try guys try Try. farting in front Front. of fire alarms. (laughs) Any really sort of high gas, brow. <laughs> any sort of gas. I think that if it's thick enough in a room, but the Try Guys office, like the, it's a very open concept. There's lots of mm-hmm. desks and people who sit in the middle. So I was stunned that it set the fire alarm off. But apparently, it was very thick and musty. The lights reflecting off the fog was really cool. Um, there was a little photo booth. There was a DJ booth. There was lots of places to sit and dance. And there was food. Um, and then they had a little karaoke room in their stage room. It was really fun. It was really sweet. Um, he had a really great time. And how was the cleanup? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Luckily, uh, we sang karaoke till about 2.30. And the friends that still stayed with us helped us gather all the cups and all mm. the good things. But Keith had just had an eat the menu photo shoot. And I think the funniest thing was Zach picked up this Outback bag and all these baked potatoes that have just saturated the foil like 
split open a thing in the bag and there was just 24 potatoes just everywhere. Oh, no. I know. I think Keith's initial plan was to take it somewhere where other people he could gonna eat it. He was going to donate it. He was going to yeah. donate it. And then it just at two in the morning, there was just potatoes all over the office. And it was, I have a very funny video <laughs> from it of everyone just crying, laughing. Zach's like, potato party. There's <laughs> potatoes. Um, but yeah, it was a blast. And then... On Sunday, we just had a very lazy pool day. We got Lord DIY's dog Moose and Bowie together. Um, Bowie went swimming. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Bowie's taking swimming lessons. Yes. Tell us. I actually didn't get to talk about what this, this on the podcast. <laughs> what it is? Why does it happen? I'm thinking about getting Alfred bartending lessons. Oh, so my. I think that that is well, money how did this very come about? well spent. <laughs> Do dogs not know how to swim? So dogs innately do how to innately do should know how to swim like if you put them over water a lot of them will do the little pad paddle motions Mm -hmm. um but our sweet dog trainer has like the coolest pool it has like a beach walk down and has always wanted to kind of do swim camp Mm -hmm. and i found out that she was doing it because we were working with her for a couple other things and she's like by the way i thought it would be fun for this summer thing um, to do swim camp. And it, it was Saturdays and Sundays. And I think she did like five dogs each day. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one started, she just worked with Bowie by himself just to kind of see where he was at. But the reason Zach and I did it was, yes, Bowie knows how to swim, but he's never been super, uh, he doesn't love it. Uh, okay. Australian shepherds, it's they're not like poodles. They're not like Labradors who just love water. Mm-hmm. Bowie's very anxious. He's a very anxious, sensitive Mm. boy. Like four months of his life, he thought he was being punished every single time we put the leash on him. He used to be scared of his leash. Mm. So he takes a lot to warm up to new things. So we decided that he was a bit, oh, I can't really disclose where I'm living yet, Mm. but we are living in a hotter environment than we were living before. I'll say that. So I was like, <laughs> but you, but you don't have a pool. We don't have a pool, <laughs> but we have friends who have pools. And if we ever go on vacation to pool, if we ever go to the lake, I want Bowie to feel good, yeah, you know, confident. And I think we hit that goal. I still don't think that he will just jump in on his own and like start swimming. No, okay. but he doesn't. He used to swim very vertically. Like it was just arms and his little bottom legs were sinking. Now Kim, our trainer, sweet Kim, taught him how to swim without being in such a panic. Okay. So it was more confidence building. And then he's just a dog that needs a lot, a ton of exercise. So I wanted like Mm -hmm. another outlet for him because everyone who I've worked with trainer wise, she's like these dogs, like if you don't exercise them enough, sometimes it can lead to like more anxiety if he's already anxious or like Mm. behavioral issues. So you want to make sure that you're exercising him enough. But in the summers, especially from like June to September, it's like very hot from like 10 a.m. Yeah. To like seven. I know they were saying you're not supposed to be walking your dog during the day in L.A. right now. I know. PSA. A lot of people don't know this. I've been driving around and people will be walking their dogs at like 2 p.m. If you can, if you take your sandal off and put your foot on the concrete and it's too hot, you should not be walking your poor doggos. I know. So even sometimes at 10, like I would wake up and like I would do my morning routine and I would take Bowie out. He would be so far behind me. I was mm-hmm. like, I think I need to walk him sooner. But we taught him how to swim. So now he has another activity he can do midday instead of being cooped up in the house because it's too hot. Well, Maggie, you know what that means? What? You got to build a pool. <gasps> oh, my God. You got to give me my pool. And Matt and Becky have been <sighs> just like since we moved in, they're like, so. What's the status on the pool? What's the status? <laughs> you got a big old backyard. Oh. There's a lot of grass. I could see a little spot where we just cut out the pool. Oh my god. And then we could work out all day. Oh my gosh. We could put him in a little current. <laughs> it would be beautiful. <laughs> it would be beautiful. For everyone. Look, I'm very supportive of this idea. Oh so. my god. Petition for Maggie and Let Zach me to get a pool. <laughs> Literally, Matt, every single time like, he texts me, says, like, what's going on? Like, what are you doing now? Pool? <laughs> pool? I'm like, absolutely not. Did you build us a pool? Oh my God, I wish. I think that just with uh, the state of the world and everyone wanting to do things to their house, like cost for everything, guys. It's just so expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, if your house already had a pool, that's good for your home value. But putting an actual pool in from scratch, so expensive. Yeah, so expensive. expensive. So we got a kitty. We got a little kitty pool for you, Bex. Um, and we also have this thing that went viral on TikTok. Have you heard of it? 
What is it? It. <laughs> have you heard of it? <laughs> it that was such a Stefan moment. I'm just so this excited new, to tell you about you it. Have you heard about it? <laughs> heard, heard about but what? <laughs> this viral TikTok pool float situation. So it's, uh, I want to say it's the size of a full size mattress. Okay. It's basically a waterbed. You fill it up with your hose. Um, and it's for people who don't necessarily want to be fully submerged in water, mm -hmm. but people who enjoy floating. Oh. So Zach spends his time in the kiddie pool. And then I am right next to him with my book reading on my, uh, mattress but basically it keeps you cool on a hot day because it's filled okay. with water and you can set up your sprinkler system to it or your hose to it and it acts like a sprinkler to cool it off because oh. if it's been in the sun and not wa not wet for an hour or two it kind of gets hot it's yeah. still plastic it's still plastic yeah yeah so it fully sold out i don't remember what the actual original um brand that came up with this concept but target came up and wanted to reap the benefits and they probably didn't patent or just mm -hmm. like get the rights on this model thing. So mm -hmm. Target has its own version. It's rainbow. Whoa. And you heard it here first. You folks. heard it here first. <laughs> and it's probably, I told two of my coworkers about it and showed them pictures and they told me it's sold out at their Targets <gasps> now. So you guys better go. <laughs> you better go. You better go to the hottest little Target you can find. Yeah, and see if they're in stock. Order pickup, go. That's your life hack for Maggie, if you don't have a pool. It's no secret that the internet, and thus the world, loves cats. And that is why we are so excited to partner with Sweet Scoop. As the de facto diva of the household, cats can be pretty choosy. And I know I was over at Keith and Becky's house the other day and Alfred runs that house, seriously. And they love Sweet Scoops. The renewable wheat-based litter gives cat lovers a better choice for their pets, their family, and the environment. And you know Becky loves that. It's better for cats with 100% natural ingredients and 99.5% dust-free. It's better for people with odor neutralizing enzymes, enhanced clumping and low tracking, and it's better for the planet. Sweet Scoop is made of renewable farmer grown ingredients and is 100% biodegradable. One thing that I noticed over at Keith and Becky's house is that it really, it completely eliminates the odor of a litter box, which is amazing. Are you stuck between litter that works and a litter that's pet and planet friendly? Sweet Scoop doesn't make you choose. Go to sweetscoop.com to get a $5 off coupon and find a retailer near you. That's S-W-H-E-A-T scoop.com. Life <laughs> hack. Have you guys been spending a lot of time outside even though it's been hot? Um, In the mornings especially, yeah. I think that where the sun sets... It, we get a good breeze too, even though it's oh, like nice. hot. It's been it's been pretty hot, but yeah. it's been good. We like spending time in the backyard. Um, we don't have a lot of outdoor furniture. Becky and Keith were so nice to give us extra patio chairs, so when people do come over, they have a place to sit. But sometimes we'll just grab our beach chairs and sit in the middle of our little lawn, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just sit there with like magazines and stuff. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What about you? Oh yeah, we've been spending a lot of time outside. We also have a kiddie pool, really love it. It's super fun. Your your kiddie pool is humongous. <gasps> yeah, so yeah. Keith found, like he went online and like looked up what the best kiddie pool you c money could buy was. Cause I love floating. Yes. I'm a floater. You're a fl you so need to come over some, and try yeah. mats. You gotta go on your float mat. Yeah. He wanted to get something that was big enough that I could put an inner tube in so I could float. Oh shit. <laughs> so we were actually in it yesterday and then we were like, oh, let's cover it with our tarp last night so, so that we could save the water and then use it today while well, last night it rained <gasps> it never rains i woke up at like three in the morning and alfred and i watched the rain for a little bit and actually the reason we gave we let maggie and zach borrow our old patio furniture is because we got brand new beautiful light colored patio furniture Yay! that was just being rained on no! like crazy and i was like do i leave the house do i go out there and just grab it all i mean it's umbrella so it's like a supposed to be pretty water resistant uh -huh. but it's underneath a big magnolia tree so ah, there was shit. some dirt that dripped on it and i was just like no, no. and we just bought covers for it oh shit. but like it never rains in la so i we think i looked no, at the weather no idea a few days ago no rain no it's rain insane. It didn't say anything. 
Rude. So well, we won't be spending any time out there today, at least. <laughs> they're washable. Sombrella is washable, but it's tough because they have like basically a like a scotch guard type uh, thing on it. But every time you wash it, you have to reapply this specific kind of like scotch guard. So stays stain resistant because it'll still stain. Oh. Um, and before we would just kind of wipe it with like a rag and everything comes up. So I'm hoping because they're supposed to be waterproof. Keith said he just shook them and put them in our guest house this morning. Oh. So hopefully when they dry, I can just wipe it. Give them a good wipe. So we're going to be spending a lot of time on our couch tonight, I think. Yeah. Um, But speaking of couches, Mags. How? What? You know what you do when you sit on a couch. (laughs) Okay, I see where this is going now. I'm like, huh? (laughs) You watch shows. Love shows. Love TV. Maggie, usually... I'm explaining what the pop culture TV show is to you. Yes. That's our normal relationship. I'm like, Maggie, watch this. Watch this. Watch exactly. This. But you have found the one show that I don't watch. I know. So tell me all about Too Hot to Handle. Yes. <laughs> I've been I've been shocked that Becky hadn't seen this one because you love reality TV. But basically, I hadn't watched season one and there was a lot of buzz about it. Mm-hmm. Um and we were vacationing with Lord DIY and mm-hmm. Jeremy. And I was like, I need, we need like a really trashy TV show to just watch at night. Mm-hmm. You don't want to fully commit to watching long HBO 45 minute to an hour episodes while you're on vacation. Yeah. Um, and Too Hot to Handle season two dropped, I think, four episodes at a time. And they did two drops. Mm. And the, when we had gotten there... We had watched the first four episodes, Mm. so it was really like every single night we watched one little episode together, Mm. and it was really fun. Um, But basically, it's chaos. It's uh, I I highly recommend if you need just like mindless TV, if you are at the DMV, if you are standing in line for something, just pull it up on your phone. It's crazy. Uh, The premise of the show is that you get – I forgot how much the pot was. I think it was $100,000. Okay. And all these people have to do is not sleep with sleep with one another. And they're okay. supposed to all be just like very hot bodies. But they lose money for kissing too, right? Mm-hmm. They lose money for kissing, masturbating, uh, <laughs> hug, uh, what like, else? No, Having sex. Isn't that like hand- self- You'd have to be like self. Uh, I, that's what I said. I was like, why can't they? Grading or self. Yeah. And I don't remember I how worried. long they're in this uh, Airbnb resort situation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I was shocked to hear the masturbating one. Um, but yeah, any normal person, if they're told like you mm-hmm. need to not do any of this and you will get $100,000. Duh. Any normal person can do this. But just watching all these dumb people, <laughs> just, I mean, it's good TV. Like, I understand why so many people are watching it and it's just such chaos. And, like, I know that they're all dumb, but I still can't stop watching. Well, are there, like, challenges? Do they, like, compete for I know they're competing to get the most the much money. money. Yeah. Yeah. And this season, all I can't <laughs> compare a lot to the previous season, obviously, because I didn't watch. But I know this season they lost a lot more money. Than okay. last season. Okay, that's got to be crazy, though, because we watched... So I watched the first, like, two episodes. Oh, you did? Okay. Before, yeah. Okay. So I knew the basic premise. And then I skipped to the end and Googled what they won. And they didn't... They barely won any money. I think everybody got away with, like, $1,000 or something. Yeah. How much is $100,000 after the taxes that they take out? Who that's knows? what I want to know. What do you end up... What's the split at the end? I'm interested because there's a lot of people <clears throat> not necessarily... It's international. There was a French man. There was a couple of people from the UK. Whoa. Um, there was one woman from Spain. Um, so I'm interested to know how... I don't know. They yeah, I wonder what the interna- international, like, currency laws are like if you go on a reality show in uh, let's say you're on big brother and you're in california california has like strict gaming rules and for sure contest rules but you don't what if you live in canada what do you gotta gotta declare some, some amount of money they transfer they over to whatever what do canadians use um canadian dollars, canadian dollars? yeah cad wow. 
Wow. Whoa, C-A-D. C-A-D. That's yeah. what it means. Uh-huh. And they have like two markups. I think they have. I know they have duties and <laughs> duties and fees. Yeah. That's what I always hear I remember about. I went to Vancouver once when I was in Seattle. We're like, let's go to Vancouver. And we just drove two, two hours. Something close like that. Yeah. Drivable in a car. And um, we went shopping. And I remember seeing on my receipt there were two times, two times, kinds of tax. Oh. Yeah. Um, so it's too hot to handle over now? Is it? Has the it's second over. season completed? It's complete. Yeah. How, do you remember how much the person won? Do you want to look it up? I'm going to look See it up. See how much they want. Yeah. I want to know how much of that 100K. Yeah. Have they got? They got. Um, I know that they lost a ton, a ton, a ton of money. And then one couple was given the opportunity to go into this like private suite. <laughs> Um, and like, if you guys survive the night, you will get $30,000 put back in the pot. Luckily they did it, My but gosh. like they lost that much money that they had to give them gimmies. And there are like, um, it's basically a Alexa type machine that like oh, okay. catches people in the act. Um, <sighs> season one managed to keep things tame, only losing 25,000. Okay. Um, and every season walked away with seventy five hundred. But in season two, seventy five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's it for however long they were there. <laughs> that's I don't crazy. Know. After taxes, like what? Are th- three thousand dollars, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so they went on TV and made three grand. I mean, three grand is still three grand. I wouldn't say no to it. <laughs> yeah, but like that seems like such a low amount considering like other shows are give. Like there's literally a show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah, there was one. One night that on season two that they managed to lose twenty one thousand dollars. Was it a blowy? I think so. I think <gasps> I think it might have been a handy. <laughs> a handy, not yeah. worth twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, my. And then God. there was one couple. Well, that was like combined with everyone one night. But there was one couple that one night. It was Cam and Emily. For those people who did watch. <laughs> lost a combined seventeen thousand dollars that was very early on but towards the end of the season i actually really liked cam and emily <gasps> and anyway. so did they seventeen thousand dollars what is that like full-on sex or is that they just like made out i think they did a hand some some gentle grinding for an hour yeah. the gentle grinding was one of the things that they would get <gasps> dinged heavy for. petting heavy <gasps> petting <gasps> guys We've talked about it on the pod before. There are so many options out there for period products. You've got your tampons, you've got your pads, and you've got your cups. And if you want a period product that looks out for your body, your lifestyle, and the planet, you got to try Flex. Flex is innovating period care with products that are body safe, made for comfort, and made to keep you moving. Flex Disc is a one-time menstrual disc that fits perfectly inside your body. One Flex Disc can be worn for up to 12 hours, and it holds as much flow as three super tampons. And then there's the Flex Cup. If you wanna go zero waste and have the planet love you even more, it's a reusable menstrual cup that Cosmo rated number one. I started using cups in college and they are so, so easy. Say goodbye to cramps, put sex back on the table and lend mother nature a hand. Go to flexfits.com slash sit with us and use code sit with us for 20% off flex disc starter kits or 10% off your first flex cup plus free US shipping. That's code sit with us at flex F L E X fits.com slash sit with us. So how graphic is it, Maggie? Like, are we watching? <laughs> is it like you're watching some HBO like euphoria type, Absolutely type not. stuff? Or is it like Absolutely an ABC not. family show where you see the sheets pulled over their head? <laughs> I Yeah, it's ABC family. Um, everyone is sleeping in the same room together, <gasps> which oh, is like super God. uncomfortable. Yeah. Then they're all it looks like no more it's not king size bed they're like fuller queens probably um and there was one moment where there was a guy talking to another girl and he kind of had to decide um or she was a newer contestant and she came on and she's like i based on the picture would like to go on this date with this one guy and he was already dating this other girl and so (gasps) he comes back from the date and he's like oh my god what are you gonna do you gonna sleep with the new girl that you had good time with or are you gonna sleep with your old girl or not sleep with anyone and save the money. But you have to sleep. I don't know. The heck? I know, right? No, no, no. But like people, because there was so few beds, you had to sleep in the same 
bed as at someone. And obviously, yeah. if you're going to sleep in the same bed as someone, but they can't, you're boning. They can't touch each other. <gasps> can't touch. T- and the way they present uh, a lot of the stuff that is happening is from like an Alexa looking cone thing okay. called Lana. And she's like, I saw you bitches, but no, she's very, <gasps> um, she's very, very formal. And she's like, okay, today you have lost $21,000. And it's very like dramatic. And everyone's like, <gasps> and everyone's looking at each other. Like y'all better who, who's going to fess up. Oh, they want to see who did it. Okay. So when the people are losing the money, they obviously know they're losing money by doing these things. Yeah. Are there, you know, they're whispering sweet nothings into each other's ear. Like, I want to kiss you five thousand dollars worth. <laughs> like how how are they reconciling that amongst themselves? They just uh, they do a lot of cutbacks and in, like interviews, and they're like, I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't know. They're just so <laughs> horny. You just like can't. I just I, I can't believe that I was just so entertained by all of it. But hey, you know what? do you think it was like a prerequisite for the show? You had to be like a super big horn dog, probably. And you just have to have a really nice body. That's about it. Nobody called us. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my God. If you could have won this in two seconds. Oh my God. If you put me in the, the tiniest size bikinis that some of these girls were walking in, oh my God. I would just have a full bone med- meltdown. You'd see me running, <laughs> running the other direction. <laughs> um, uh, but there was also these segments where Lana wanted people to connect emotionally. Oh. So they would like bring life coaches and like, therapist i don't know oh, wow. i fast forward through some of these sections because i thought it was you wanted to get back to the <laughs> naughty naughty maggie she's like i didn't want to watch the therapy well there was one where <laughs> get back to there the was handies. one where the guy had the men talk to their penises and i'm like i don't i don't want to watch this because they wanted to talk about the relationship that they had huh. they're like about i don't it was weird it was weird anyway if you ever have some free time would love to hear what you think about. Too Sound hot. off in the comments uh, yeah. if you love too hot to handle. It's just a train wreck and you just can't look away. <laughs> are they going to do a third season, do you know? Probably. Whoa. Probably. Where are they even going to find that many horny people? Uh, I mean, it's not just America. They have the rest of the globe. That's true. Do you think they're just like nicking off Bachelor contestants that didn't make it? I think they're, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe some of the Bachelor people will be interested, though. I could see that. Oh, I'm sure they would. I'm sure. Do you think that uh, Netflix reality pays better than The Bachelor? Because I heard Bachelor contestants make make close to nothing, right? Yeah, you don't make really anything. When Keith was on Bring the Funny and like AGT, none of those. I mean, you made money on Bring the Funny, but not like TV money. It was like just a regular like day rate of some sort. Um, but I know um, Deanie Baby from Bachelor was mm-hmm. on a podcast and he was talking about how people go on. The reason that so many people go on Bachelor in Paradise is because you do ask for money. Oh. You're like offered a certain amount. But it's also something like I think he was saying he made like maybe 5K. Oh, wow. if I remember like, it correctly, an of, episode. And like, I'm sure they're yeah. like longer than eight hour shoot days sometimes. Yeah. Oh, well, it's got to be like a 24 hour. You're basically signing up to like have your life watched. But I like think it makes so much sense when you're like, oh, that's why people stay on paradise for so long. And that's why people want to like they go on these dates with people that they're not even interested in. Like was Colton on paradise? Ah, uh, so is paradise only people who have been mm-hmm. on The Bachelor before? It's no new New, new. I don't think it's any new friends. Mm. I think it's only people that have been <laughs> no new friends. It's just people who were on Bachelor and Bachelorette. Gotcha. Respective seasons. So coming together. they got some clout. They're expensive now. Yeah. Some people were saying, I think that's what Deanie Baby was saying, is that people were like negotiating for better deals because they found out like someone else was getting 10K an episode. Mm. And they were like, well, with my you know, following and what audience I'm going to bring to this, I should have this much money, which good for you. Like you're making the entertainment that they're making millions off of. Mm -hmm. So why not? Mm -hmm. Why not negotiate for the best rate possible, especially because you're not going to come out looking good. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone maybe, I mean, Rachel, Lindsay and Tasha, obviously they they came out looking good. good. Yeah. But other than them, I feel like everyone else, you don't really like them. Yeah. I don't know. Just putting your whole entire. I don't know how they do it. I don't know. I much respect. Much respect. (laughs) Oh, oh, 
It's rough. I'm off of, I'm not like on a huge reality kick right now. Mm -hmm. We're doing, I mean, the usual bachelor uh, business is going on, but it's not like the most exciting season. Mm -hmm. But I have been watching Elite Mm. on Netflix. Holy guacamole. This show is saucy. Is it? So it's like Gossip Girl, but in Spain. Spain. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched the first couple episodes. So good. But I hadn't watched Money Heist. So then I started Money Heist. Oh, yes. And so, I got to season two. So tell yes. me about Elite. I know it's the same. A lot of the same actors. <gasps> There's three actors, I think, that are the same from La Casa de Papel. Yes. And uh, Elite, which I don't know what Elite is in mm-hmm. Spanish. <laughs> Come and say, do you say elite? I think it just means it's elite, elite, right? Yeah. 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 I also like every once in a while, they're they're at a bilingual school in the show, so they'll speak English. And, and I'm like, like oh, I understand Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> um, so it's like a mystery thriller show mixed with Gossip Girl, mixed with um, like ever so lightly softcore porn. Oh. Like not <laughs> as... <laughs> Is it like euphoria? Not, it's kind of like euphoria, but not as like... Like when I was watching Euphoria, I was like, I liked it, but there were times where I was like, I don't understand why this is happening right now. I'm like, (laughs) what? Why? Why is this so graphic? And I'm like, oh, they're supposed to be like 15. (laughs) It's a little weird. The McSteamy Um, one. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. It it was, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, But Elite is the same way, but I think one, all the actors look like they're 35. Mm. I mean, they just look old, Mm -hmm. they don't look young. Um, and I don't know, for some reason in my head, I'm like, well, maybe that's how it is in Spain. <laughs> like maybe that is, they're just, you know, free. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. Gossip girl, soft porn and like a murder mystery all wrapped into one. Um, but it's like, it follows these three first, the three main people come to this new school called La Escanta, I think, or La Escanta. Um, yes, my beautiful accent. Okay. Um, and it's uh, Samuel, Samuel, Nadia, and Christian is the last one. And Christian is the same actor that plays Rio in yeah. La Casa de Pavel. Gotcha. Um, very different character in this one. Can you do um, his laugh? Oh, no, that's that's Denver. Oh, oh yeah. So Denver. Denver plays the main guy, Samu- Samuel's brother. Okay. Or Samuel. Uh, Samu, as they call him, which I Samu. love that nickname. Samu. Um, but yeah, his brother is the guy who played Denver on Money Heist. And mm-hmm. if you watch Money Heist, it's the guy that goes, <laughs> he like has this crazy laugh. There are like compilations on YouTube of just, just all laugh. the times he's laughing. It's so funny. So good. But it's completely different character in this. He's like very like brooding and he just got out of prison. Mm. Um, he has depth. He's a good actor. Yes, he has depth. He has a lot of range. I okay. think all these characters have a pretty, or all these actors have a pretty good range. Okay. Um, but it basically is a show that I think shows like maybe Cruel Summer wanted to be, where some of it happens in the future and some of it happens in the past. And you gotcha. get little tidbits of how things shook out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a really good um, mystery. And I'm on the third season now how many total seasons four seasons the fourth season just came out i will say with this towards the end of the second season i was like okay everyone needs to stop having sex for like two minutes just so we could get some dialogue because i need to know what's happening here Mm -hmm. are we ever going to find out what happened to certain characters (laughs) but you do it's really they do a really good job of bringing all of like the themes and the characters and the storylines into new seasons in a way that's like not overdone or like you know it it still makes sense and it still has a connection to the first season okay yeah it's kind of like watching one long movie and for the murder the Mm -hmm. murder mystery and do you find out early on in this like the four seasons like in Casa de Papel they basically gave you the heist in the first episode (gasps) yeah so you find out in the first episode I think you find out who was murdered and then at the end of the first season you find out who did the murder who done it okay yeah and then those storylines go on to like a missing person and um god what's even the storyline of the third season right now wow other things well you sold me <laughs> sex murder oh my god it's so good but you definitely could not I was on a plane and I was like oh maybe I'll put on an episode and I had my iPad out and I was like nope oh no nope nope, nope. I even like closed the windows when I watch it in the living room because every once in a while I'm just like those are butts 
our TV faces the living room window. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, I don't need like a child walking by and being You like, want to hear a hack? Mommy, what's that? So <laughs> I sometimes will watch TV shows at work and I have an iPad and I got one of these screens that you have to be completely dead on in the center for you to see oh. what they're doing. It's kind of like what they use at grocery stores or like, let's say you go to a bank. Oh. You can't see what they're doing at the <gasps> bank. So I'm, not that I'm Whoa. watching. What like, are you watching, <laughs> Maggie? Not that I'm, work. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I like sometimes worry that I'm just in the cafeteria with like headphones on and I'm like, I don't know if there's children behind me. I work in a children's area. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. I definitely would not recommend watching Elite in okay. um, the cafeteria the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> or an airplane. You know, it's funny. Of all things I've been missing over the past year, it's the little things that I miss the most. Like making awkward eye contact across the room or meeting strangers in line. That's what I'm trying to get back to. Vaccination is the most effective way to help prevent COVID-19 and get back to all the good times. Find out where to get your COVID-19 vaccine near you at vaccines.gov. That's V-A-C-C-I-N-E-S dot gov. alone in a room is most of the watch. murder <laughs> mysteries that I do watch I do watch at work because Zach won't watch them with me so I'm usually either I don't like to be home alone when I'm watching murder murder mysteries because I get scared but if Zach's oh. in the other room I'm fine but I like watching it in broad daylight okay mm -hmm. what Zach doesn't like that they're scary or he doesn't like mystery shows he's more oh, he doesn't like murder murder yeah or true crime he does not like true crime at all <gasps> oh he gets really sad yeah. I mean, it's sad. True yeah. crime is sad. Zach likes, he's a big like Seinfeld comedy guy. He's like, oh. I just want to watch happy things. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. And like, uh, you know, guilty pleasures, bad movies. Yeah. 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 Maggie, what's your um, guilty pleasure show or oh, movie? Trolls. 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 Or the hot or trolls chick. Trolls too. Or the hot chick. Um, Trolls one. Trolls two is Trolls World Tour. Also very good. Mm hmm. But Trolls 1 has a special place in my heart. I think that I watched it in one of, I think it was timing too, because it was during it. I watched it during the time where the world was, I mean, the world has been really sad, but I was really sad. Mm -hmm. The world was really sad and I watched it and it was just a breath of fresh air and sparkles and all things good. And I recently saw its horrible Rotten Tomatoes score. And I was what like, could have because Zach was telling me he was going to come out with guilty pleasures. And I'm like, trolls is too good. It's not a guilty pleasure. <laughs> and I firmly believe that I shared it with my mom um, when I couldn't see her. I was like, mom, you're set too. you should watch trolls. And she calls me all the time. And she's like, I love trolls. <laughs> love. Tro and then as soon as trolls too, we watched trolls too soon after. And she watched it too and loved it. Do you know what the tomato meter score was? I think it was like a 67, which is. Not nice. Trolls not is art. It's not the best score. Yeah. And there was a couple of YouTubers who did voices. And I can't remember if it was Trolls. One, Grace Helbig did a voice. And I was like, oh my gosh. So cool. So <laughs> cool. I was like, Lauren, you should. When they come out with a Trolls 3, I hope you, you get a voice. Because <laughs> then I would know someone who's associated with Trolls, which would be so cool. <laughs> you could be tr a troll by association. Yeah. <laughs> I, if I could just do one sound effect for a troll, I would yeah. die happy. What would your sound <laughs> effect for the troll be? Man? Give us, give us, a, give the listeners a taste of the troll within. Maybe I could just do a really pathetic sneeze, like achoo. <gasps> Ooh, so you'd be like the sneezy troll, or like the allergy, because they all have could, like little. They have I don't like think themes, I could, right? Yeah, I don't think I could be a full troll, but I, I would be happy doing a sound effect for a main character. So you'd be like the Foley artist. Universal. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure? I mean, I'm with you. I don't think my, you know, guilty oh, pleasure remember, is really guilty because I think it is genuinely a good movie. It has stood the test of time. <laughs> it has Academy Award winner Paul Giamatti in it. Oh. Big Fat Liar. Oh, Big Fat Liar. Big Fat Liar is like the best movie that's ever come out. I think it's just. What is, do you know what its tomato meter score is? Should we look it up? <sighs> Big Fat Liar's tomato meter. Let's see. Let's see what its tomatoing is. You know, I think that I did watch it when I was younger, but I don't actually remember. Well, girl, I'll give you my Amazon password. We yeah. bought it. You we bought, bought it. it. I love watching it at night. That's like a good um, go to sleep 
movie. Big Fat Liar, Tomato. Oh, Frankie Muniz. Of course. I Frankie know this Muniz, cover. Amanda Bynes. Ba- Amanda yeah, Bynes. You know this cover. It has um, 44%. Wow. It is a guilty pleasure. Oh, 44. Oh, and a 44 audience, too. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. It's so fun. <laughs> if you ever do like the Universal tour uh, where you go on the little tram, they basically film the whole movie on the Universal lot. So you get to see like a lot of those things. And there's like a big action sequence at the end. It's like peak Amanda Bynes. I think it was like right before What a Girl Wants. So she was just like in her prime. Ugh. Frankie Muniz was still killing it. Yeah. So good. So good. Such a good movie. I am in need of a good TV show right now. I Besides uh, Too Hot to Handle, I finished Mayor of Easttown. Very good. Nice. Um, and I haven't started anything since. So Yeah, I think you'd like Elite. Yeah. I think you'd like it. And I've asked you this before, but maybe describe it for those who are like me. Hmm. Solo language people raised hmm. in the American school system where they didn't force us to learn other languages. Oh, yeah. When you're watching shows like Elite and La, La Casa de Papel, um, how is the translation for you? Can you like oh, yeah. walk out of the room and still understand what's going on? Or are there differences between the Spanish that you understand and the Spanish that they're right. speaking? So they, there's different... I wouldn't say dialects because it's a lot of the mm-hmm. same, but the way they... Um, it's a lot more... F- I want to say it's formal, but I, in Peru, they speak Castilian. Okay. Castellano, they call it. Um, and the Spanish they speak in Casa de Papel mm-hmm. and Money he- money Heist and Ali is a little different. So yeah. I thought that I would be able to turn off um, subtitles or if I wanted to do laundry, which mm-hmm. I do, I, Zach just gets upset with me whenever t- I do laundry. He's like, people make art for you. You sit down and you focus. But I do laundry. <laughs> and I'd be like, uh, I'm doing art for you. <laughs> do you want clean underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, unfortunately I tried doing that with uh-huh. money heist and Casa Padre Papel, but they've <clears throat> like used different words certain times. Not that when I am following along in subtitles, I do understand it more than the average person, but they mm-hmm. do speak different. They dif- speak a different type of Spanish. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's Spain, Spanish, Spain, Spanish. Yeah. So it's a little harder. Yeah. But it's still a lot of the same root words. So mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff does make sense. Si, claro. Claro que sí. <laughs> <laughs> or you can say both. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I noticed too, like listening and watching, um, especially like with the Spanish speaking shows and the like Korean and Japanese speaking shows. I'll see them say like a word like si claro. You, you hear them say it all the time. And you're like, oh, yeah. And then you see it as certainly. Sure. Yes. Uh, yes, of course. Yes. Uh, Definitely. They'll. <clears throat> tweak subtitles to follow storylines a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So it's not sometimes word for word. But I also do like watching subtitled shows because mm-hmm. I help it helps me focus. And like yeah. yeah. You cannot like look at your phone or like walk out of the room. You're yeah. like, I have to stay here. <laughs> yeah. And watch everything. If have you seen Dark? It's a German <gasps> no, show. No, I've heard it's been recommended quite a bit though. Yeah. I there is a lot of characters. We haven't started season two because okay. it came out a year after season one was released. And Zach mm. and I were like, whoa, there's at least 40 characters. Um, whoa. And there's a little bit of not time travel, but things that take place in different time settings. But is it German lost? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's a lot of characters, but. That's all I'll say without giving it away. <laughs> without spoiling anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've been, what I recently say? started taking tennis lessons. Oh. Yeah. Let's jump in there. Yeah. Um, so I had been wanting to join tennis back in a couple months ago, but the tennis instructor that mm-hmm. I reached out to, he was so busy. So wow. I finally got an in. I have the worst time slot mm-hmm. ever. But I'm, I'm actually... Um, doing it with one of my old coworkers who works 12 hour shifts. She doesn't have um, a set schedule. So it's really hard for us to find a common time Mm -hmm. to go together because our schedules are so varied. Um, So we go at Fridays at six o'clock, which is like (gasps) usually when everyone wants to get to like, Hey, what are you doing? It's Friday night. Let's go. Um, And we usually come back, collapse, shower, and then run over to wherever we're going to go. 
Um, but yeah, I started, I have not touched a tennis racket ever before in my life. And so I just started doing this thing and it's actually really fun. What, uh, sparked the tennis. I feel like I see tennis on TikTok a lot right yeah. now. I feel like it's become like the new, like it sport to learn. I know. I think it's just probably more people spending time outside. Mm-hmm. Um, I always watch, uh, Zach's grandmothers have always been super into tennis. Um, and one of our friends plays uh, and we just moved to a new aerial area and there is a um, golf and tennis area that you can play. So I think that's kind of what sparked my also I started doing swim again. So I played swim oh, cool. and water polo in high school mm-hmm. and traffic's been really bad after work. So I've just been swimming laps close to where I work after work and been driving in a little less traffic. Oh, that's nice. But I think that I just love being outside and Mm -hmm. I've been looking for things to do that still maintain distance from people. (laughs) Does Um, Zach play with you? Tennis? Yeah. He was, I didn't know that it would be something he would be interested in because of his back Mm -hmm. stuff. And like tennis sometimes is a lot of running. Oh, okay. But he used to play when he was younger. And, oh, whoa. But he hasn't played with me yet. But he's he wants to practice. and But he can't come to our lessons. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. Do you have to, like, uh, reserve, like, a tennis court? Or is it, like, basketball where you, like, just walk up and you claim I, it? You reserve it. So our instructor <laughs> will reserve it for us. Oh, okay. And then we come in. And he, like, has been providing. I haven't bought a racket. I haven't bought a skirt yet. <laughs> Haven't done all the things. Are skirts required? Is that like the uniform? No, I've been just wearing shorts, but I just feel like I have to earn my skirt. Mm -hmm. You know, people who like play, I didn't want to be the girl who plays tennis once and then shows up in a full blown (laughs) tennis outfit. I feel like, I know it gets people excited. They're like, oh, I'm going to really work hard now because I spent all this money on this new outfit. But I am going to let myself earn it. But I have my eyes on a couple squirt options. Love a good oh. short skirt situation. Yeah, REI has some cute ones. <laughs> Give me updated on the, like if we come watch you play tennis sometime. Oh my God, you know I, I mean? Die. Sit in the stands. Go, go, That'll be, uh, yeah, our own little Wimbledon. Yeah. <laughs> LA Wimbledon. Yeah, but we're just working on form right oh. now. I haven't rallied with someone yet because I'm still like learning. What does rally mean? Rally means when you're hitting back and forth between another person on the oh. other side of the court. But right now he's like, this is how you forehand. This is how you backhand. Whoa. And he'll just drop the ball. Go. <laughs> drop the ball. Go. Forehand. And then I have to stand in the center. Have you um, like flung your racket out or like? Not yet, but I used to play softball. So like the first couple lessons I was hitting the tennis ball over and he he asked me at the end of the lesson, he's like, so how many balls did you you, you get over just so I know how many to pick up? <laughs> I'd be like, um, no more than five. <laughs> it's definitely like probably 10. <laughs> Do they have those like automatic guns that shoot out the ball? Like when you're at no. like a batting cage? No, he, I'm sure they have those, like people have to buy them, <laughs> but um, no, not yet. Not your guy. I'm too scared. I think I'm not there yet, you know? Yeah, I saw one on TikTok that was like... The string? Uh, the string, yeah, where yeah. it was like on the ground and you smack it and it basically works like a paddle ball. Yeah. And comes back at you. You can do it against the wall. I asked him, what do I do if I want to practice? And he's like, you have to go really slow and controlled against a wall. Would that just be pickleball then? I think a lot of us are ready to get back outside, but my closet says otherwise. I'm getting some much needed style updates with the help of Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. It's a completely different and fun way to find clothes that you will love to wear. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and then send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns, and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. I got a fix recently, and they included something that I would never buy for myself. There were leather pants in my fix. I tried them on, and I'm not gonna lie, I liked them. So I kept those, and that $20 styling fee went towards my leather pants. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash sit with us, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash sit with us for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash sit with us.
Mm-hmm. Isn't that what pick up racket racquetball? Pickleball's been like racquetball. Yeah, a lot of people are playing pickleball nowadays. Whoa. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that like um Wall Street men play and they make like skeevy deals, you know, <laughs> while playing racquetball. Ball. Pickleball. Pickleball. Is it the same thing? I don't are they different? I think they're different. Do you play one with a pickle and one with a racket? Like ugh. I don't know. I don't know. One of my friends like joined a team during the pan- pandemic. Yeah. And there are like certain, there are like little, you basically play in like a little box of a room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Pickleball. V racket ball. V racket. Um, pickleball uses a small plastic ball that appears similar to a wiffle ball. Oh. The balls have holes and are generally very lightweight. Paddle tennis balls are depressurized tennis balls made of rubber. So they might remind you of ping pong balls. So many sports with so nets. many balls. <laughs> <laughs> so many balls out there. So Do you ever watch those um, YouTube videos where they um, use the um, hydraulic press and they smush balls? No. Ooh, look up hydraulic press on YouTube. It is so is it supposed to be satisfying yeah Mm -hmm. they do it in like slow motion and you see like all the seams of like a baseball rip open and then you see the stuffing in it do they do it with like basketballs too i've seen i'm sure they could but i feel like that would be like a horrifying it's just because it's hollow it made a big old noise (laughs) yeah but they smush all kinds of things with the hydraulic press what's been the most besides a baseball a rubber band ball oh my god look up rubber band ball. (gasps) that's probably the most satisfying oh my god smooshing a rubber band ball that was cool i love that you're on depressurized (sighs) youtube whereas i'm like ingrown hairs blackheads and whiteheads pops you yeah, maybe they'll do like a pimple under a hydraulic press. No, that would rip, oh your, that would rip your face off. <laughs> that would be that would just be murder. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been able to find any like hydraulic presses on TikTok lately. But Max, what does your algorithm look like? Because oh. I'm always shocked when I'll be like singing a song or like I'll say something to Keith. And he's like, what are you talking about? Because your algorithm. Because I'm on a different algorithm. Like the other day I was like, Keith was doing something and I was like, sir. Sir, are you there? And he was like, "What are you saying?" <laughs> and I was like, "It's the TikTok thing." So we're on two different TikToks. What? Give me a run on what your TikTok will look like. Um, what was I watching this morning? I get a lot of animal content just because I love all that good stuff. <sighs> I turned on the car this morning, and you know what song played on the radio? <gasps> Castaway. <laughs> We are cast away. I was like, oh, this is on the radio now? Okay. (laughs) I've been really into home stuff lately and like decorating. So I feel like a lot of like artsy interior designers. Yeah, decor TikTok. Lots of decor. Lots of people like to send me wedding planning stuff. Like, these are the things you should get your wedding guests. (laughs) Have you you learned anything from them? Other than that one I sent you. I sent Maggie one where the wedding... um, the cup that they got to use for the wedding that was a gift for every person there was a hydro flask. That was insane. As a proud owner of two hydro flasks, how much that did is that so cost? expensive? I think that was like that is like fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's like thirty dollars like, even for a little cup. Sustainable. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god. Not for your bank account. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, have I learned anything? Yeah, did you get any, like, good takeaways? Or are you like, nah? <laughs> I've learned a lot of more people are doing, like, online, very intricate websites for their wedding party instead of doing, like, the really intense paper invites. And I think I'm, like, warming up to that more. I feel like if you could make it really cool and maybe do, like, very cute picture pictures or, like, video on oh yeah like a retro camera you can make it really cool so i think we may go that route eventually and yeah, not do like digital. the bible the bible of wedding cards oh that's cool yeah i have a lot of animals as well on my tiktok especially cats cats i like cat content um what else do i have oh a lot of fashion i've been trying i don't know if you noticed my shoes Ooh, and my socks us. i've been trying to dress like a child because they say it makes you look cool <laughs> I like your shoes and I Thanks. like the, you, the crew socks are fun too. Yeah. I'm trying to, um, yeah, I'm trying to up my style game. Yeah. And so I get a lot of like fashion TikTok, but it also like lands me on like eight dresses you need from Amazon. And you're like, no, 
And I'm like, ah, oh, man, okay. But like, I, I feel like I need to watch this so that you can show me other content like it. Mm-hmm. But I also don't want to buy my dress off of Amazon. I want to know what, oh, you know who I like? There's this girl who tells you why her outfit is working. Oh. So she'll be like, this is, this is my outfit today. And here's why it works. Because my shoes match my purse. And because my necklace is this color. And this is tight. And this is loose. And, and does it actually you, look good? Yeah, yeah. She gives you like good. She's like a t- stylist. So she gives you like good, like timeless sort of ideas for how to like style your outfits. Well, that's and, cool. Like, yeah, what works and what is maybe making it look less like put together. Hmm. So I like that one a lot. I love that. And then a lot of kids dancing. So many dances and a lot of Bo Burnham. People are just obsessed at the moment. I got on like Bo Burnham TikTok where it's just everybody doing the Jeffrey Bezos song. And that went super viral. Yeah. Inside. And we saw Inside in theaters. (gasps) We did. So we went um, last weekend to see Inside inside of a theater. It was my first time going to a movie theater with strangers. Yeah. How was it for you? It was good. It wasn't packed, which I thought was great. It was only, I mean, there were maybe like six other people in the theater other than us Mm -hmm. and partners and uh, Ned and Ariel were there too. Mm -hmm. And our friend Bebo came. Uh, But other than that, it was very like empty. So I kind of, like I saw some pictures of other theaters who like people were like up and dancing and like waving their arms. And I was like, oh, that looks so fun. But I was also like, "Mm, I probably would have had a panic attack if someone like stood up in the middle of the movie. I was I was telling Becky when we were at dinner, I was like, so if someone starts dancing, I might start dancing, too, but I won't start it. I won't be the first, but I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, I liked it. It was funny, though, to hear the Netflix. Oh, that was weird. (laughs) Yeah. Imagine being in a theater, everyone who's listening and just having something that's been playing in your living room for years on end at an on-screen theater. Everyone started laughing because it was just so, it was like dun, such dun. a like weird, uh, like not, yeah, maybe like surreal moment where you're like, yeah, is, is TV just, or are movies just big TV? Yeah. You know, it was very, I don't know. <laughs> We're used to seeing like Lionsgate. Rawr. Yeah. Or like, yeah. And I don't think there were trailers. No. Yeah. I wasn't. don't think there were trailers. I don't know if that was just particularly the Alamo draft house. Cause I'd never, been to one of those in LA. Yeah. We went to the one in Austin, which I don't mm-hmm. know if that was the original one, but they had really cool karaoke rooms there. That was a neat one. Yeah. And one of the employees were sweet enough to give us a tour of the backstage, which was really cool because they had all sorts of fun props back there. And yeah. And you could see where the projectors were and everything. Yeah. Very cool. And you could order at the Alamo Draft House all between any time in the movie if you just like rotated your menu someone would come and collect your menu and give you chocolate chip cookies or vegan cookies if that's your preference yeah and they had alcohol yeah that you could order yeah chicken tenders yeah they had a lot i can't so i'm guessing that kids aren't allowed at this movie theater then if they serve alcohol Uh, i mean they serve alcohol at like amcs oh you're right yeah so you can bring in a personal it's for that. But I know they do things like I know Universal mm-hmm. does any of the um, you can't bring any alcohol to the downstairs movies. It can only be the upstairs movies. So they're probably like and then if it's rated R. Yeah. If there's a split level one, it also doesn't it won't let you do it. Like I remember going to see Shaft mm-hmm. two with my friend Jessica Uh and we really we got line at the bar and we're like okay we're gonna go take this to our theater and the guy was like oh yeah you can't take that downstairs and we were like what what guzzle I was like but we're 21 we're well over 21 (laughs) and so yeah we did miss the previews for shaft too but I still enjoyed it yeah (laughs) how fun Well, you guys, I know we've given you so many recommendations of what to watch on TikTok, what to watch on TV, what to watch at the movie theater. But sadly, this is the end of the hour. We do have to leave and go deal with all the rain that we have. Maggie's got to get to her tennis lessons. (laughs) We got to go check on Bowie in the pool that Maggie's building me. (laughs) Um, And yeah, it's, you know, it's been great chatting with you here, Mags. I love this. I felt like we were just, just like old times, you know? (laughs) Just hanging out. (laughs) And we will have the mamas back with us next next week. week. 
Um, fingers crossed. I think so. I'm yeah. pretty sure we're going to have the mamas back with us next week. Yeah. Um, but until then, make sure you guys are washing your hands, wearing your masks. <laughs> if you're not vaccinated yet please. and you're able and eligible, please, please go do it. do it. Please just get it. Please. please get it so we can get out of this just yeah. eternal, never ending hell cycle. Mm hmm. Be sure to rate us five stars and hit that download button and we will see you next week. Oh, our podcast email is also you can sit with us pod at gmail.com and we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.